Romans 8, uh, 21, says that he causes those who love him to inherit wealth, to fill their treasuries. Isaiah 60 says that he causes the wealth of the nations to come into our hands. You say, well, how in the world? I don't know. I'm just telling you what the word says. I don't, you don't have to figure it out, right? He causes it to come into our hands. Proverbs says he causes the wealth of the wicked to come into my hands. Isaiah 45, 2 says that he wants to give me the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Now, the, the challenge is that you don't get misfocused. I don't get misfocused. I don't seek the wealth. I seek God. Because I seek God and do the word, the wealth comes. You follow me? See, that's a difference. The, there are prosperity preachers out there. Come to God and he wants to prosper you. That is partially true. He will prosper you if you'll do the word of God. But you don't come to God to be prospered. You come to God because you realize you're a sinner. And you need his help. You need to get on the path of life. And so you accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Get on the path of life. Start doing the word. And then everything else starts coming in line. See, if you're seeking, if you're seeking the wealth, if you're seeking money, you're going to be led astray. If there's two jobs here, and one of them pays $10,000, I'll say, let me, let me update my numbers. One of, <laughs> one of them pays $150,000, and the other one pays $50,000. In the world, without the Lord, it would be a no-brainer, right? What do you choose? The hundred and fifty. But what if... You, as a Christian, are being led by the Spirit. You've committed your life to the Lord, and you say, Lord, I want your will. Now, you guide me. And the Lord clearly speaks to you and says, take this job. Would you do it? Yes. yes. That's obedience. See, this is being led by what we see. This is being led by what God says. Romans 8, 14 says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of of God or daughters of God. And so you and I have to understand the ways of God are not the ways of men. I tell the story and you've heard it. Several of you have heard it. When uh, the Lord took me out of school and he told me to go teach, substitute teach a school at a school. And I did. And one of the schools that he went, that he sent me to, uh, they called and wanted me to come and teach. I was making $32 a day. Now, given this is back in the 70s, 1979, 1980, but I was making $32 a day. So the school calls me and says, you know, we'd like for you to come and teach. I wanted to go there and teach. They were a Christian school. And the other schools that I was teaching, was, they were not Christian schools. And so uh, I said, well, how much do you pay? And they said $17 a day. So immediately I said, oh. And then all at once the Spirit of God said, this is my will for you. So I go there. And I start teaching $17 a day. Now, I lived on peanut butter, okay? And that's okay, because there's nothing wrong with that. It's good protein, and you'll get healthy from it. But the thing is, I go there. And the first day that I'm there, actually, it was the second day, wasn't it? The second day that I'm there, I taught one class the first day, another class the second day. And I'm standing uh, in this small room, classroom, and there's a window in front of me. The teacher's desk is here. And I'm standing behind the desk. And uh, I look up, and there's a girl standing in front of the window. And the Lord said, she is going to be your wife. And I said, Lord, she's a student. He said, she shall be your wife. So after class, and you know the story, as the students were leaving, and I said uh, to this girl, I said, can you play the piano? Because I would prayed for a wife that could play the piano. And I said, can you play the piano? And she said, yes, a little. Why do you ask? I said, maybe someday I can tell you. <laughs> she said, do you have a word from the Lord? I said, pray that God's will be done. And then 30 plus years. Gina and I are still here. Hold on, I'll figure it out. 
I can tell you the year. It was 1982. So somebody do the math for me. Richard, do the math for me. 36. Okay, 36 years. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is this. $32 a day versus 17. If I went in the natural, what would I do? I'd have done 32. What would I have forfeited? My wife. Yes, that's right. You see, that's how we forfeit the plan of God in our life is we choose to go by what we see rather than what God says. And when you do, you will miss the plan of God. Guarantee it, guys. You'll miss it. But I learned a big lesson because I started seeing God move. See, when you and I buffet this body and we go according to what God says and not what we see, we begin to see heaven move on our behalf. The angels move on our behalf, Psalm 103, 20. And so you and I can trust God. See, I promise you, you can trust him. I don't care what it is. If he says, my sister has a saying. She said, if, you, if it looks good, smells good, tastes good, and feels good, and God says it's not good, guess what? It's not good. If it looks bad, tastes bad, feels bad, and stinks or smells bad, and God says it's good, guess what? It's good. it's good. See, never lean to your own understanding. Always get the mind of God. Always do what God says. And you and I will have the blessing of God. The Lord gave me something and I didn't share it. So when you were sharing your story with Gina. No, stay up here, please. Okay. So when you were sharing your story about Gina, and again, that one simple act of obedience, and I think Andy said it. So that one simple act of obedience, if we read Deuteronomy 30, 19, you know, if you really think about what that verse says and you take it to heart, you know, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Okay, if you really think about that one choice that Joe made, one choice to go to this school to make $17 an hour instead of $32 an hour. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I'm Chad. I'm Joe's son-in-law. I married his daughter. That one simple act of obedience, if he was disobedient in that one thing, because of $15, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Right. You know, his children wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. My children wouldn't be here because of that one choice that he made. One choice. One act of obedience. It's a ripple effect. We may think we're only harming ourselves or it's only this little thing. It's got a ripple effect. It's got a ripple effect. Now, God's going to protect you. So even if Joe was disobedient in that one thing, God would have protected me. God would have blessed me. He would have led me to somebody else. It might not have been his perfect plan. His perfect plan was for me to be with Hannah. He would have protected me. But our actions impact everyone around us. One act of obedience. So be obedient when he tells you to do something. Amen. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. See, guys, it's more than about you. It's more than about me. It's about the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs> you and I need to cry out to God. I said, Lord, help me to be kingdom-minded. Help me to be kingdom-minded. Let me see that $32 means nothing. $17 means nothing. It's just your will. Whatever that is, Lord. Hosea did that. The Lord told Hosea to marry Gomer, a prostitute. So he could show Israel what they were doing. What if, what if, he, what if he said, Hosea said, no, I don't want to do that. Israel, when some of the people would not have gotten the message. And see, you and I, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the kingdom of God. When you and I stand before God. See, Hebrews, we have the written word of God today. We have Hebrews 11. It talks about the men and women of faith. 
Do you know, and somebody said this recently, when we get to heaven, there's going to be more added to the Hebrews. It's going to be about all those who've come after those who are written in Hebrews. It's going to be about you and me standing firm upon the word of God. Thank you. It's about you and me standing upon the word of God. And see, that's what, that's what the Lord wants you and me to realize. The kingdom of heaven is broad. And you and I have to understand it's not about you. When he says, move over to this place, it's not about you. It's in the big picture where, what God is doing. See, that's what you and I have to understand. But it is your responsibility to make sure you're hearing the voice of God. And the only way you're going to hear the voice of God is if you have hidden the word of God in your heart. That's how discernment comes. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, even to the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 